Things we're making Thursday, things we're making Thursday. Is it like a rule that we all have to sing the song? Things we're making Thursday, things we're making Thursday, things we're making Thursday, yeah. Things we're making Thursday, things we're making Thursday, things we're making Thursday, yeah. Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle here, and it's Things We're Making Thursday with that very catchy tune that was created by J Hook Magic. Thank you so much, Jess. That was awesome. And before we get too far in it, let's mention that down below you will find a link to the Facebook group of the hashtag TWMT. For things we're making Thursday, you will find a list of the themes for each month because we have a theme. And so you'll find that list below. And of course, you'll find my link tree, which will give you um, access to all of my other links, like my Facebook group and my Discord and things like that. So if you want to come in over there, that's awesome. And I think if there's anything else, oh, my email's down there. I always have that in the description too. Um, if you want to participate in Things We're Making Thursday, you can join at any time. Um, they've been going for, what, 16, 17 months now? Something like that. Um, they started out with a pattern, apparently, that everybody did. And then, um, so you had the different takes on it, whether people use different yards or whatever. And then this year they decided to go with themes. So, um, if you are not a content creator, you can still participate. And if you would like to have me share your project photos, please send them to me. I would love that. Just include the hashtag things we're making Thursday in the, um, Subject, that's what it's called, yes. Okay, so that's kind of like the little housekeeping bit. So let's talk about April. It is try Tunisian crochet. Some people love Tunisian crochet. Um, some people do not. I don't love it. I've done it multiple times in my life. Um, here or there, every once in a while, I'll pick it up. I just find that with the way that I hold my hook and the way that you line things up on the needle or hook, um, it's just super awkward. And then like this is the hook that I used for my project. And did you just see how that's like that? I don't know. Maybe if I put it in boiling water, it would straighten out. Um, so this doesn't help. Some people have much better ones. Um, I know that Shannon bought a bunch of the bamboo ones with the cords, the colorful cords, and I'm assuming they're pretty much par on cord. Um, they're pretty much on par with the knitting needles that I bought when I first started knitting. I didn't know that I was gonna fall in love with knitting, and so I bought like, just like a cheap wooden bamboo set that had the rainbow cords and then went oh I actually like this and ew no these needles suck and so I've, I have been slowly buying better needles but um yeah so anyway I have been working on a project and I'm happy to say that I'm putting this away I finished my project um, there is some Tunisian stuff that I'm planning to do, but I don't need a special hook for those because they're just going to be like little things. And so I can just use like that little section that's before the thing. Or even if I use my ones that have the grip, that little section is plenty for what I'm going to be doing. So um, depending on what you're making, you don't need a lot for Tunisian crochet. But if you are making big things, then you need a lot. Um, I forgot until uh, Shannon said it on her video. She called them Afghan hooks. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what they are, is Afghan hooks. We call it Tunisian, but I learned it in the beginning as Afghan stitches and Afghan hook. And, and I forgot about that. I knew there was another name for it, but I couldn't remember what it was. So 
anyway, I finished my project yesterday and I don't love it. Um, but here it is. It is my misshapen dishcloth. Um, things I like about it. I like that I chose the knit stitch, so it's got this, um, it looks like a knit here. I really like that. It just, I like how it looks. It looks very nice. Um, and then I like the back too for a dishcloth. It's, it's going to be a fun little scrubby back. But um, I don't like that it's ski wampus, but it's a dishcloth, so I'm dealing with it. Um, I have some wonky areas, like right here, it's wonky. And somehow, I know how, I ended up accidentally um, doing a decrease in the middle of that, so that was weird. Um, threw my count off for the whole thing, that was funny. And then um, there's another spot on my decreases. It's not as obvious once I put the border on, but somewhere along in my decreases, when I was going to this side, I didn't go all the way to the stitches I needed to before I did my um, decrease. And so it ended up pulling it in a little bit further than it was supposed to, probably somewhere in here. Um, I also don't like that my three sides don't actually match because the decreases don't look the same on both sides. Like this side's got, no, this side. This side's got this line there, the decreases don't look the same, the increased sides don't look the same. One side here's got lots of like holes along the side and it just, it just, I'm the kind of person that has to wear matching socks. So my OCD tendencies are super triggered by the dishcloth and I am just hoping that once we start using it I will forget all about it and it will just it's a dishcloth it's okay I don't ever have to make another one I'm not giving this away I'm not selling it we're just gonna put it in the dishcloth thing and we're gonna start using it and I will probably forget all about it because then it will become all dishclothy but I did put a single crochet row around the outside and I'm very glad that I did that because it definitely helped it not be so noticeable that the four sides are different. Now the only one that looks seriously different is this one. No. Why do I get... I'm so off. This one. Like I'm being distracted by what I see in the camera. Um, anyway, so. The yarn that I was using, I had probably about a yard left. That's it. So, um, not too bad. And probably if I hadn't have done some mistakes in my decrease section, it probably would have come out perfect. Or I might have been playing yarn chicken. But it's okay. It's all good. And it's done. Woo, woo, woo. So this project is done. I have completed a Tunisian crochet project in the month of April. Therefore, meeting the things we're making Thursday thingy challenge whatever and now I know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of April when it comes to the Tunisian crochet I'm gonna be making leaves um, I'm probably gonna try out both kinds but I kind of lean towards one of them but one of them the th one of them I was actually really irritated by the picture that she put on the the thumbnail because that's what I wanted to make but that's not what she made but I realized that actually it would be super easy to make it by just changing single half double half single slip stitch like kind of changing the sizes I could get the shape that I wanted with that one tutorial by changing some of the way that I do the stitches along the thing so I think I'm gonna do that um, but yeah, tune in next week to see what did Michelle actually make? Did she make leaves? 
Did you use the Tunisian techniques to make leaves? We're going to find out. Um, anyway, remember to let your light shine through your creation. And, oh, hey, remember, hook that subscribe button. Leave a like on this video. Um, some yarn down in the comments. I think I covered it all. Yeah, remember to let your light shine. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!